So we're at the first day of rehearsal for my play, a not so traditional story. It's been a long time in the making. And yeah, today's just about getting us all together, looking at all the work the designers have done and doing a reading and seeing how the script sounds. Yeah, I wrote this in a, within a month in a little um, place called Portalana, a little hut there. And yeah, the journey it's taken has been amazing. And yeah, thanks for everyone for their input. It hasn't been a, a resource like this has been out into the community. There's never been a show, Tasmanian Blackfella theatre piece like this, that has gone to all the schools in Tasmania. You know, first off, I didn't have puppetry in mind as such. But after, you know, this development, it's become crystal clear that this needed puppetry. And you know, kids love puppets. Well, I love puppets. And yeah, I just think the, the puppet form will serve this story the best. I'm Sam Routledge. I'm the Artistic Director of Terrapin Puppet Theatre. And I'm also the director of A Not So Traditional Story, which is a new play written by Nathan Maynard uh, for Tasmanian school children. Good. As this is a brand new Australian work, so it's a premiere, it's never been put on before, I always like to build a process which supports the writer to find things out in the room from listening to how their work is being performed. I think the role of the director is, is really to provide the outside eye and to guide people to basically do their best work making sure the storytelling is, is very clear and to honour the script, so honour the words that are said whilst making sure that the visuals are also telling the story as well. But it is really important that everyone has fun and that everyone's relaxed because that's when you create your best work. Not too relaxed, but relaxed so that your ideas can come through. I always feel so privileged to be working this role because you get to work with so many artists and hopefully you're creating a process for these artists where they get to do something which they want to achieve in their own practice and you're providing them that opportunity to do it. So giving people the opportunity to freely express themselves and to be working within the parameters but also you know, doing their best work which is by achieving something that they're interested in as an artist. My name is Bryony Anderson and I'm a designer and maker. Uh, I work a lot in puppetry and objects for performance. I think a designer is kind of like an algorithm and you punch in all this information from the script and the performers and the director and you run it through your personal algorithm and then something comes out the other end. I start by gathering as much information as I can and then I wait and see what comes out on the paper. This is The Great Spirit and it's been hand knitted by a lady where I live. Oh. Tara is the first character that they'll meet. He's the kangaroo who has some elaborate conspiracy theories and he's a self-proclaimed jiu-jitsu master. The eagle is a little more anxious I guess and Unintentionally, while I was making it, it's ended up looking a bit Shakespearean, but hopefully that will play into the melodrama of the character. Nathan described the lizard as a gallery-owning middle-class lady lizard, and I'm looking forward to seeing how that character will emerge once it's on the performer and being ridiculous. I'm Danny Proctor and I'm a Pakana woman from the northeast of Tasmania. I did grow up kind of in dual community up in Newcastle, New South Wales and also down here. Moving back down here full time when I was 19 and pursuing music and pursuing art. A few people in my life were kind of, you know, grooming me up and trying to, to push me into other aspects of the art industry. So, yeah, luckily I aced my audition and I've got to work with a great bunch of passionate people on a really important story. So, no, yeah, him! Wow! We're doing a showing at about the two week point in the process. So, we're doing that for the reference panel for the Department of Aboriginal Education and then also for our own critical review panel. So, basically, the aim is to get feedback at a point in the process where it's possible to implement any changes that are recommended or that we think should happen. So it's just a time to show where we're up to, show our progress, get feedback before we do the final stretch of rehearsals. In a time when the land was loved and in return it provided its children with all that they needed. Little elements get added constantly. So for instance, one week we'll be in and we'll be working 
just on the text and just on you know the blocking and getting the show up and on its feet and going. And then later on that same week, we'll add in a couple of elements of costume that are halfway through being being finished, but we'll test them out, see if they're comfy, see if we can work in them. And then they'll, you know, they'll go away and keep working on the design of that. And most processes of new work, particularly, have to have that level of incremental improvement. It has to go in bits and pieces, because if you just tried to throw it all in together, it would just be a mess. So everyone's trying to find their feet and everyone's trying to find what works together and find that symbiosis. And when we get that, that's when the show really starts to click along with a bit of juice. Touring's great, you know, it's a hell of a lot of fun and you get to experience a new, a new house every day and a new audience every day, which is great. I feel very lucky to be touring with the people that I'm touring with and that there is this great synergy between us on and off stage as well. Some kids, when they're watching it, they'll be just there for the pure entertainment. You know, they want to hear the next funny line, but there's other kids that are fully on, engaged and, and know what's going on. Like we've done one show and at the end, one of the kids goes, so was this about Anzac Day? And straight away that they could see the similarities and they could see that, you know, there was a war. You know, there were frontier wars and we were the losers, <laughs> you know, and it was brutal. You know, they very much tell the truth. They don't know any other way around it. They just say what they think. And question time is always the, the funny part of the day. One of the, I think it was only like the second day, a little kid, probably all age of five at the front, like anyone have any questions? His hand was straight up, we're like, you're very quick mate, what's your question? He's like, this is about Aboriginals and I like Aboriginals. And it was almost his statement to his friends. You know, I told you Aboriginals were pretty cool. But then you get the other bit where it's like, you know, we introduce ourselves at the start. We're doing an Aboriginal play, playing Aboriginal characters and kids still, you know, because we don't look as Aboriginal as the most stereotypical, you know, mainstream idea of an Aboriginal person. They're still questioning, going, are you even black? So the more that we can change that and they can recognise someone and actually see a face and go, oh, they are, you know, that's going to change their perception over time as well. I'm Brody Paxson, we're at Dodge Ferry Primary and we just saw a wicked performance. Wonderful Indigenous play about the invasion of the British. Uh, I thought that it was absolutely amazing. It was a good play. Great to see you. It was really nice to see the other side of the invasion of when the British colony came to Tasmania and them and pushing them away from their borders, which I thought was sad because it was their place first, not ours. I don't expect every kid, when they're watching it, to go, oh, that's about that. I know for some kids, it's going to be a slow burn, and that burn might be two days, might be two weeks, it might be 10 years, and they'll go, oh, that's what that was about. And I've always said it, if they can connect with these characters, then they can develop empathy for these characters, and then they can develop empathy for the Tasmanian Aboriginal people's story, our struggles. And I think we've done that.